Hyperia has opened, closed and reopened to thrill riders and all seems good at Thorpe Park again, so it felt like a good time to really break down my thoughts on the UK's tallest, fastest and most weightless roller coaster, from the outstanding to the opportunities to improve. I'm Paul from Loop Theme Park Adventures and this is my honest review of Hyperia at Thorpe Park Resort. Manufactured by Germany's Mack Ride, Hyperia stands at 236 feet tall, hits a top speed of 81 miles an hour and delivers over 12 seconds of airtime during its course. The presentation of Hyperia is a mixed bag. The entrance portal of the Golden Wings is quite nice and there are a few stylistic touches around the queue line, but it is mostly a lot of gold fencing. Hidden behind that fencing is the splashdown element missing its viewing plaza, but more on that later. I do like how the queue interacts with the slow outer bank as trains depart the station. The station itself is fairly plain from the outside, but does have a few nice details within with decoration around the walls, and then the dispatch sequence which sees smoke rise and audio play as the wings are forged in gold before your very eyes as you prepare to take flight and find your fearless. The ride experience begins with a slow outer bank to turn the train around. This is almost like a little bonus to start the ride before the lift hill and gently tips riders to the left and is more noticeable if you're sat on that side of the train and aided by those awesome lap bar restraints. You then ascend the lift hill at a decent speed, well, usually, heading towards that first drop and the drop absolutely delivers wherever you're sat on the train. Towards the front you hang before diving and at the back you get whipped over. It's aggressive, it's forceful and then you twist to the left and back on yourself. This is such a good first drop, the best we have in the UK I think and it sets up what's to come. After sweeping down from that drop the train then manoeuvres up into a non-inverting Immelman and this is a fine element but probably the weakest of Hyperia's big moments. It delivers a bit of airtime, but everything feels quite standard here and as I mentioned in my first ride reaction, I do find it a bit strange that they opted for an Immelman style element after the drop when Saw does practically the same thing next door. However, what follows are the two elements that I think will come to define Hyperia for years to come. First is the insane outer bank turn, which begins with an outward bank that slowly turns into an inversion, providing airtime to start which seamlessly transitions into hang time, and lots of it. And you may as well get used to being out of your seat as the huge dive loop stall follows, and again it's just pure hang time as riders are left dangling for a solid three seconds. These are the two standout parts of Hyperia for me and designing the ride in a way that delivers them back to back is something of a masterstroke as it makes them so memorable. If the outer bank and dive loop are a bit special though then what follows is the opposite and that's the splashdown. A splashdown which has to be said does look a little sorry for itself. Failing to deliver the viewing plaza or indeed a lake that looks less like Hackney Marshes is one of the more disappointing decisions made during Hyperia's construction leading to a splashdown that you don't really notice on ride nor can you enjoy off ride and those trim brakes bite pretty hard too so expect to be slowed down a bit here. Fortunately what follows is a lovely wavy sort of out of bank stengel dive which produces more airtime loveliness before the final airtime hill tricks the front of the train with a final pop while criminally neglecting the back. Overall, Hyperia's ride experience is superior to just about anything else we have here in the UK and honestly a lot of UK parks suddenly look a bit less appealing because they don't have a Hyperia. What Thought Park offers now is a brand new record breaking roller coaster with modern elements and design that has an emphasis on airtime, hang time, height and speed and it's so awesome to have this goddess here in Britain. So the overall rating for Hyperia is an A, it's not quite at that truly elite A plus level and isn't quite a top 10 worldwide coaster for me but it's mighty close and a fantastic addition to the UK theme park scene which frankly blows everything else we have here out of the water. If you'd like to see more from the opening day of Hyperia, including my first ride reaction, then there are a couple of videos up on the screen now. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.